Hello everyone and welcome to this short video about a new painting of mine called Last Train Home. Don't necessarily talk about why I called it that, it's just a random thing on this occasion, but that's absolutely fine. So what I wanted to do was just to take a few minutes out now just to show you the painting, some of its features, the materials, we can have a proper close-up look, get a little bit more up close and uh, quite personal with it as well. Let me just tell you from the outset, from a size and perspective point of view, 200 centimetres by 90. I don't know what that is in inches, but it'll say so on the website anyway. So if we have a, a little look then, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So this is predominantly a pink and lime coloured painting. It's also got features of black and silver and a very nice metallic gold, which we've got a very, very sun, sun and shiny day here today. So we're trying to show you what the gold looks like, but we'll, we'll try that as we have a little whiz in and out of it to, to show what it's like, because the metallic gold really does show up phenomenally well, especially as light changes. So what can I tell you about this then? Well, the first probable thing that I would say is, is that this is created with a lot of freedom. So, you know, when, when I think about things and try and take, try and not anticipate what somebody might want to buy out of the equation, what I'm left with is, okay, well, I can pretty much do what the hell I want. And I think when I can get rid of all the weight and the pressure inside the head and just paint because I like to do different things, this is the kind of thing that comes out. So it's very expressive, it's very free. It's that journey from going, okay, I'm not gonna worry about anything, I'm just gonna go for it. Having said that, there is always elements of structure there has to be, otherwise things don't work out. So what is essentially a slightly off-white base layer of enamel paint? Over the top of that, then, the next layer were the two main applications of paint, or the swash, slashes, slashes, splashes, swooshes, call them whatever you want, which are the limes and the pinks going in opposite directions. Uh, the pink is actually a Pantone colour which is quite interesting. Uh, I don't use Pantone colours very often, but if you have a look at Pantone online, they're often used in the printing industry and a massive company that you know, specialises in producing unique colours. So the colours are beautiful, rich, vivid pink. I'm not quite sure how much you'll get uh, on the camera, but hopefully you'll get something. So yeah, so layer number two will be the, uh, the pink and the lime going over the top. Now interestingly, over the top of that, before we get into the loops and the swooshes and the gold, there are other tiny little hints as well. And we've got this kind of mauve kind of effect here going on. There's uh, little drops of um, um, like greys and sort of an off kind of white going in there as well, which you might be able to pick up. And, you know, one of the most important things about having, I think, any kind of abstract painting is, is that, you know, if you were to walk into a gallery and see it, a uh, commercial, you know, public gallery, whatever, you'll get an initial boom as soon as you look at it. But if you're going to own something, I believe that you should, you should be able to relate to it on a close-up level as well as a far away one. So what I tend to do with all my works of art is to try and make them work from all distances, really. So it's very important to make that uh, contrast between the far away, which is where you're seeing it now, and then the close in. Because one of the other great things, apart from the movement that goes on in this painting, is the details. And I've got a selling technique. I might call it selling because I don't really know what else to call it, but it's the putting in of these tiny little cells in some of the layers of the paint. Now, I haven't done it on all of them. I've only done it in a few of them. It, it exists on little parts of the black, but predominantly it's in the pink, and I've only just done it in a couple of areas. And this is really just to break up some of the solid areas of paint. So over the top of that, you've then got the main kind of loops and swooshes. I, I don't know if there's a technical term for that, but they're these soft arcs and curves. Again, I'm really fascinated by loops and arcs and things. I think they're great, and radiuses, call them whatever you want. So those are the final layers that then go over the top when the other layers are dry. And all that really seeks to do is just to bring some of it all together, maybe quieten it down a little bit. Because don't forget, you know, someone's going to have to live with this on a daily basis. So whilst you want all the pizzazz and all the wow of owning a piece of abstract art and the colour and the dynamics of it, 
You also need it to flow. It needs to settle down. You need to live with it. You need to be able to sit in front of it without it grabbing you by the throat. So I always try and bring in elements that allow you to live with something as well as enjoy all those critical aspects of owning you know, something vibrant and uh, especially a piece of abstract art. So that is Last Train Home, 200 by 90 centimetres, multiple layers, enamel paints, tons of freedom, massively crazy, but actually done with great thought and care and attention. So that's the painting. Any questions, if you're watching this on YouTube, drop me a comment in the box. And if you're viewing this on the site, let me know what you think.